Secrets to making smoked beef ribs? Wow, are these fantastic. Hey, this is Ricer from Dead Broke Barbecue Nation and welcome back to the channel. But if you're new here, we try to help you enhance and amplify your backyard barbecue fun. I'm asked this all the time, what is my favorite thing to barbecue or low and slow? And I always answer immediately, beef ribs. Or as I call them, beefers. So preheat that oven, Tommy. We're gonna amplify some backyard barbecue fun. I took these beef ribs out of the cryovac. I trimmed them up a little bit. You want to try to get as much of that silver skin as you can off those ribs so you can get a little bit more rub to penetrate that meat. One thing I like to do on the back side of beef ribs is always pre-slice that membrane a little bit and that'll help you get the pullback that you're looking for. So there you go, I'll give you another secret. Coated up these beef ribs with some Texas brisket rub from Suckle Busters. I got a half pan of beef trimmings and we're gonna put them in the smoker too to make our own tallow. Obviously not a lot of you have a bunch of beef trimmings in your freezer that you can make your own tallow. But if you're interested in trying this, and this is a big secret, go ahead and check the description below. And there's a link in there for some Wagyu beef tallow from Chicago Packaging. Now I will admit it's a lot easier just to purchase it than make your own tallow, but we've got a lot of beef scraps, so we might as well do it. Today we're gonna start off by cooking these beefers right on the Traeger. And we're gonna run this pit at 275 degrees. Hit the button, press ignite. Always open up the lid and let all that white smoke get out of the chamber before you start cooking. This is the white smoke that I'm talking about. Make sure you get this out because I have seen other people blow their lids off. And yeah, all you Traeger guys that say there's some super califragilistic backwards smoke remover thing, I've seen this same exact pit blow up on YouTube. I mean, come on, this is like being in a rock concert. But once you hear that afterburner kick in, like we just heard, the smoke will start to disappear a little bit and then we can close up our lids safely. Let's burn a nice and clean. We'll let it preheat for about 10 minutes and then we'll get these beef ribs under some smoke. The Traeger is ready and these beef ribs are nice and sweaty. But before I put them in, I just wanna show you where I cut those little slits. Because the fire pot on this model is right in the center, we wanna make sure that these slits are facing that part because then our pullback is gonna go this way. We're gonna put our trimmings on the left side of this fire pot because it's a little hotter on this side, so we want this to cook a little faster. I'm gonna run these until I start to develop the actual color on these beef ribs that I like, and that's gonna be usually right around 170 to 175 degrees before I go ahead and wrap them up. I'm four hours into this cook, let's go ahead and check out these beef ribs. Well, we're certainly getting some decent color on them. They're starting to dry, so I think I'm gonna spritz them up. But first, I've been rotating them from front to back, and we can see that the fat is really starting to render and we're starting to build that tallow. Moisture's coming out of it, but it's always good to go ahead and just stir it up. But make sure you got a good glove on when you're stirring this up a little bit. Now I always tell you that if you got too much moisture on here, you might not get such a great bark because it starts to pool up. But on beef ribs, you are gonna have a few pockets in it. Not much you can do, but you wanna keep it moist still. I've got at least another hour before I get to the color that I'm looking for on this bark, and then we'll throw these in some butcher paper. I'm five hours into this cook. Let's go ahead and check some temperatures, but I'm thinking we're looking pretty good. I really like the color of the bark on this one. The other one in the back there looks a little lighter. Not sure. I already scooped out some of the tallow and put it in this little pot so we can get that on there. Let's just check a little temperature. Oh yeah, 180, 181. So I ran a little hotter and I'll check this one too. We'll see what this one looks like. She's gonna be a little hotter. Yeah, it's still okay though. And just get this one on some butcher paper. Grab our good old tallow. This little pot's really gonna be hot. Now I'm hoping that I was able to film some of that tallow just now too. How that remainder in that pot was really going. Pour a little bit right on the paper, I like to do that. And then we also want to get some right on top. Get it right about here and then we're just gonna get this under and we want to get it tight up against these ribs. Take, roll one side over, score it out, repeat the same thing on this one, keeping it tight, 
score it out. We're gonna flip. Now remember, that is our meat side. There's another bone side, keeping this tight. Get her underneath there. When it's wrapped on the bottom like this, it just actually gives you this thin little extra protection on the bone side. Open this back up. Get this one off. We've got some really good pullback, obviously. And we're just gonna get a probe right into one of them right about here. And that's just so we can monitor this cook a little better. You can see this is bubbling really nice and all that moisture is getting evaporated out of there. This is some good gold right here. If you haven't done it, you gotta try it. Break it up a little bit, whatever. I'll wrap up that other rack of ribs and then I'll bring you back when it's time to see if they're probe tender. I'm six hours into this cook and my thermal work signals is reading 207 degrees on both of these beef ribs. Let's go ahead and check and see how they're doing for some tenderness. People are always asking me how I do this. Well, this is how I do it. You can tell right now by just with this probe here that these are tender. Get this one up and check this one too. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Just from reaching in there, I can just tell. And I've already taken out a whole quart of tallow out of that pan. I'm gonna take the ribs out and we'll put them on this nice little wire pan and then we'll start up our PK100 and we'll rest these overnight. These are certainly crazy juicy. Get that probe out. Get this one on here. We'll set them off the side and get the PK fired up. Here's that jar of tallow. Nice, beautiful amber color. No, I didn't pee in it. Come on. And I will say that this Traeger did a pretty good job because anytime you can go ahead and cook beef ribs in six hours, you're spot on. I have my Pro Smokers PK100 all set up. First, before I turn it on, I actually want to go ahead and add a little bit of moisture in this pit. I'm not going to add a lot of moisture in there, but I don't want these ribs drying out. And this pan is actually what you put the sawdust in when you're going to go ahead and smoke in it. We'll just put it in one of these lower shelves and just set it in there. Grab our beef ribs and we're just going to slide that in on this shelf right here. I'll put a link in the descriptions below for this Pro Smoker PK100 because if you're into cooking sausage, bacon, or jerky, this is the pit for you. Turn the power on. We'll go ahead and hit this. Hit the <laughs> and then we're gonna bring this temperature down to 140 degrees. Now, obviously not all of you have a PK100, but this is when you're gonna put it in your oven. The lowest setting on your oven is only 165 degrees. Well, you're not gonna be able to hold these for that long, in my opinion, because I think it's just gonna keep on rendering and it's gonna get them overcooked where they get actually kind of mushy. My good buddy Russ and I talked about it because he's got one of these pits too. If you haven't checked out Smoky Ribs, well, you've checked out Smoky Ribs, but if you haven't, make sure you go check out his channel. For all you caterers, you might wanna look at this pit too because you get more sleep. I'm gonna rest these for at least 10 hours probably 12 so tomorrow bring it back and we'll cut into them and we'll see how we did my guess they're gonna be pretty good these beef ribs have rested for 12 hours got them out of the PK got the cutting board all set up let's go ahead and check out and see how these look inside again these are short ribs they're not the big dino bones but I kind of feel like these taste always a little bit better a little more fat the bark is good on these. You can see that there's a lot of moisture in them. Obviously, if you rest any barbecue in your oven in your house for more than five hours, you're gonna be hungry the whole time. That's why I use the PK out in the garage. For all you backyard barbecue people, you're never gonna really rest anything like this unless you have a party that you wanna get cooked for. But wow, we got a beautiful smoke ring off the Traeger. Nobody's gonna complain about that. Now, I'm not a squeezer of meat or anything, but you can see there's a lot of juice in this. Lop off a piece or two. Oh. Tell you, COVID and gloves. I didn't even touch this, it just breaks open. Thank God I got my FOD here and available. Grab another glove. <laughs> Super tender. 
packed with flavor, like always on a good short rib. This is a perfect way to cook the night before and have a great lunch. I can taste that Texas brisket rub. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all I got. Roll the nation. Boys are back at school, but after football practice, got some good food to eat. There's so much smoke in here. Get out of here, fly. Hi-ya!